so I don't know what to say, but I know yeah. for a lot of us, at least on Thursday night, it's not that easy. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so, you know, going back to last match, it just felt like SUJ was able to throw out whatever hitbox he wanted without any recourse. Dang, yeah, he, he feels like that when he plays just in general. Yeah. And uh, Zach kind of does that sometimes, too, <laughs> against Ice Climbers. <laughs> so what leads to that? Is it just because the Ice Climbers are just so scared they're not willing to press any sort of buttons and they just end up running over? Is kind of, yeah, like if... If you're too, if you take too many risks with ice climbers, then you can really get punished hard. So then, what happens is you you respect your opponent a lot, and then your opponent can just start to throw out a lot of hitboxes, yeah. and you're not set up for your punish, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. So do you feel like the moment you lose in this match against the fox is the moment you just stop throwing out moves? Not necessarily throwing out moves, but just the moment you um, are just stuck with shield. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. If you're stationary and not doing anything, that's bad. But like sometimes. Ooh. Oh, good SDI up to get out of that. Um, so how do they SDI that? How? So Blizzard has hitboxes coming out every five frames, and if you don't SDI up on when you're getting hit by the Blizzard, then you'll just be stuck on the ground, and then they can wobble you. Uh, and Jago's a player that I've seen a lot of improvement on, especially in the last like six months. Yeah, I had never seen him um, before this weekend or this week, but at um, Training Mode Tuesdays, he was playing a bunch and like doing a lot of really cool stuff. He does a lot of crazy D things. He goes for a lot of like, for, like turn around forward tilts. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Oh, okay. Would you grab ledge? Okay. Yeah, he was. Oh, he was nice. The the blizzard clipped S fat, but it clipped him from above. So instead of getting hit by it a lot, he just fell down below it. Okay, it looked really strange. It almost looked like it didn't hit anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, he was so quick doing his up B that he didn't really go very far. So what do you like about Jago's gameplay so far in the first like half the match? He's not giving SFAT a lot of time. Like when I when I play this matchup, I wave dash back a lot and try to play neutral a whole lot. But he's not really like giving SFAT a lot of chances to get reads on him and decide when to go in. He's just going at him. Um, so he's playing at a faster tempo than that SFAT's gonna be comfortable with. Exactly, yeah. He's going in a lot. That being said, obviously SFAT's still like keeping up with it fine. Yeah. But I mean um, he has a stock lead. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, you know, a lot of foxes, they'll platform camp. So what are you exactly looking for to find your grab or your setup? Like well, if, if especially they're if they're moving from platform to platform a lot. Yeah, if they're going from platform to platform, you usually, you can't try to challenge it too much. That's where you get yourself in trouble if you start jumping to the platforms or even trying to jump up with up airs. Wow, that was an amazing spot dodge. And um, so you have to, ooh, wow, straight into it. <laughs> I bet I bet as fat was looking for a down throw down air to SDI, yeah. but then he wasn't mashing. Um, but yeah, so when they're on the platforms, you just have to sort of goad them into coming to the ground by like, at least what I do is like pre present myself in an almost vulnerable way. So you're like your own bait. Exactly, you're, yeah. You're the carrot on a stick and you're also the evil guy holding the carrot. <laughs> exactly. I, so I was I'm on to you. <laughs> you. You look all nice, you have those smiles, you love helping out your opponent, and then when they least suspect it, you eat them. Exactly. So that's always tricky when, um, when the ice climbers are at the edge and they're doing that up B stall, it's really hard for them to get back on because they're still their options are still just kind of like, you know, ledge dash, but Fox can beat that out with the back air pretty easily or any other thing. Oh, wow. So people don't know this a lot, but Fox's drill has a hitbox um, on two out of every three frames. So every third frame, there's no hitbox on the drill. So if he mistimes it or misspaces his drill so that the last frame before he hits the ground is not a hitbox, then uh, he can't get a shine out before a shield grab. So that's why a lot of ice times are going to fish for that because they're rewarded so heavily. Exactly. And most foxes don't really punish it that well um, if they do end up landing the shine. I see. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a pretty good risk reward situation. I liked SFAT's adaptation because Jago was throwing out a lot of forward smashes, so SFAT was like, hey, maybe I can just jump over you. And yeah. that's how they set up a lot of damage on the yeah. first stock. Although, in trying to jump over him, he got hit by that back air. So that's the, <laughs> the scissors and the rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh, great shine back air. Just <laughs> how does that nearly clipped the back air. How does that feel to get shine at like zero and lose your nana? <laughs> it's pretty bad. I mean, you have to you have to be careful as you play. Was that the intentional? End. The side B? Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, he tried to do a shine side B. The shine didn't end up hitting, but um, with ice climbers, I 
I'm pretty sure with Luigi, this is the same case, where Fox doesn't really have any follow-ups off of a shine other than a side B, um, except maybe like a wave dash, like a perfect wave dash dash jump cancel shine, you could get it, but probably not. I see. And so if you, sh if you drill shine side B, that's a really common thing that people do to Ice Climbers and Luigi. And I also want people to take note of that get-up attack, as Fat did. The get-up attack occupies the ledge from the backup climber, and it hits the main climber, stopping them from doing an up B recovery. I love when people know school things like that because they're so confident. It's like, oh, Nana doesn't have a jump. Yeah. Let's cover everything. Okay, so there, um, SFAT missed the SDI and the Blizzard, but because he got it so many other times, yeah. Jago didn't immediately go for a grab, and he didn't get that opportunity to wobble. Yeah, it's a, it's a respect, right? It's like, yeah. okay, they're going to get the SDI. Let's find the next option that could work. Yeah, so that's really important. Like, even, even if it leads to... Oh! Even if it leads to something bad happening, it's good to to like to beat the first part of the execution test because yeah. then the player will respect that and then not try it, and then they won't get as many easy kills. On I always find the game the 